so welcome back to Third Age Reforged and to another battle replay. This one is going to be on Ker Andros, and this is of course the newer version of Ker Andros. This isn't that new anymore, I suppose. It's been sort of at least a thing since sometime last year now at this point. Uh, but obviously this is going to be a 2v2, so technically speaking it's going to be more like the old Ker Andros in many ways, with just the keep being the sort of central point of the defence, and the outer city not really being used all that much, because you can't really in a 2v2, the defensive and the offensive factions will be too stretched to make it seem like much of a siege at all really, so there will be a lengthy manoeuvring period as the attackers move through the city, because uh, obviously this is 42,000 frames, but quite a lot of those I imagine will just be the attackers moving into position to get ready to assault the central keep through the city itself. Uh, but let's go through the defenders first of all, seeing as we're here, and it's going to be a combination of Arthur Dane and Dol Amroth, so two of the Numenorean successors, and it's going to be Thick Dick playing as Arthur Dane, and Stannis Borathian playing as Dol Amroth. So here on the front you can see on the walls we've got some Dunedain Troll Slayers, one of my, you know, one of my favourite looking units in the game. And conceptually they do play an important role for Arthur Dane, because one thing that they do lack a little bit of is a bit of armour piercing in melee, and the Dunedain Troll Slayers not only provide that, but some armour piercing at close range as well with those javelins. Very, very strong. Uh, kind of like a more lightly armoured equivalent to the Atenmore's Troll Hunters from the neighbouring province of Rudawa. Very, very strong though, and they do fill that vital gap in the Arthur Dane roster. And next to them we have some Doran Ernil archers from Dol Amroth, of course, the basic Dol Amroth archer. They do not have their armour upgrade, so they're just in their basic chainmail. If they still provide a nice and cost-effective archer that you can put on the front line in a field battle, or in this situation, in a siege. We also have some Dunedain peacekeepers down here. Some more skillful Dunedain spears, so the more heavily armoured equivalents that uh, the other Numenorians can have. And they can fill the gap quite nicely. I th think they're multiple HP, actually. I'm not sure. I haven't really kept up with the Dune 9 Peacekeepers because they've sort of flitted about from being not really brought at all because they were kind of disappointing in 0.95 or 0.91. Uh, but they have undergone some changes and I have seen them perform quite well in more recent times. So we'll see how they do in this battle where they're going to have to try and hold off superior numbers and try and plug gaps. Speaking of which, in choke points the Doran Ernil pikemen should prove to be very effective indeed, of course. Cheaper pikes that the human factions can uh, can field. They can field pikes actually in greater numbers than their more polearm focused neighbours Gondor. Uh, but of course the Doran Ernil pikes are not as high quality as the guards of Osgiliath, but they should still do a decent job here. Again, no armour upgrades from Dol Amroth. It's another unit of them on this side as well. Uh, speaking of which, so we do have some Arthurdane pikemen and they do have their armour upgrade. Uh, so it should be interesting to see how they can perform in the choke points as well. So quite a lot of pole arms we've got going on here. We've also got some dismounted Fornost Array Knights, which are multiple, well, not multiple HP, but they are two-handed swordsmen. Uh, the human sword masters are undergoing a few changes, and this is going to be the last battle that I show before the uh, hotfix is going to be in effect. It is already out, but I wanted to get all of the replays that I had on the older build done first, at least the ones that I'm going to show. Uh, so the Four Noster Rain Knights should be a little bit more cost efficient in the hotfix, as will all of the Human Sword Master units, but for here, the heavy armour should stand in pretty good stead over the long period that this battle is likely to take place. Some Dora Nail Archers and some Band of Brass Archers as well up on the, the walls here. The Band of Brass Archers are actually pretty high damage now, considering the opponents they have to go up against, but of course they will get hacked to pieces in melee, and at range they won't do too well in a skirmish fight either. Also some Dunedain Rangers, again the epitome of damage over defence, and they are up on the walls and they should do a very nice job of shredding the attackers as they come forward. And then back up here we'll start to get into some of their more elite units I'm sure, so we've got a couple of units of the Tirithea Wardens, which are some very tough spearmen indeed, backed up by a unit of Arthurian Pikemen without the armour upgrade this time. Uh, but just in behind them we have the Anuminas Gate Guards, one of the scarier pikes in the game at the moment. Not quite as overpowered as they used to be in point nine one, where they were multiple HP pikes, but they are, of course, still a pretty big mainstay in the Arthur Dane roster because of that phalanx potential they offer. Some Black Swan Vanguard, the AP is often very, very useful, and they are off the same sort of price point as stuff like the Castamist Legion, Guardians of Khan Doom, and that sort of thing, so the extra AP that they offer can give them the edge, even in, against units like that. And then at the back we've got a couple of units like the Tirith Aya Marksman, also some Haven Guard with the uh, the Dole Amroth General in it, of course, one of the strongest two-hander sword units in the game. Uh, possibly something that they would have to contest with the Temple Executioners from Mordor. And then finally, the Arthur Dane General is going to be a unit of Fort Noster Rain Knights. How useful they are going to be is quite dependent, I think, on whether they can get out into the city and running some disruption. Because as it stands, of course, there aren't going to be units that can hide because this is a siege. So. 
Moving on to the offensive units. Apologies if I'm a little bit sniffly because of my uh, my allergies at the moment. We've got Beery playing as Umbar. A couple of units here of Belagir Halberds at the front. Their AP should stand them in good stead. But against the Pikes, they will be outranged. And then we have a couple of units of Belagir Archers back here, which are, of course, the very cost-effective Archer that Umbar can put on their front lines with their slight shield value and their decent armor values. Back here, another unit, which is going to get a little bit cheaper in the hotfix coming up, the Abrazani Narduzagar, another human sword master unit this time from Umbar however, not where the general is hanging out unsurprisingly. We've got a ram over here with some Numenorean shield guard, the footbound variant of the Numenorean lancers. I love the new unit model that they've been given more recently, very very strong spears of course, which can be good as a first liner to try and push through the enemy lines. Belagai footmen of course, lower tier spears but still pretty good, some more footmen and some some Abrazani Nadubau even there as well, so again, another very tanky archer. And speaking of tanky archers, doesn't get much much more tanky than the Naru Na'aru Royal Guard. Uh, at the moment, in this version of the game, they have enormous defense, so they are actually a little bit... Uh, they're going to receive some slight reductions to their defense, but they're still going to be a very, very strong unit, of course. Very similar to the Hearth Guard of Amon, Sewell, multiple HP, Spear, Archer, Hybrids. And then finally, uh, the player that sent me the replay is going to be Master Blaster, and he's playing as Khan, and in a siege, uh, Khan have got a few shortcomings because they can't use their uh, mobility to full effect. They do have some nice infantry. The Nomadic Light Infantry is of course more low tier units that they can use. Uh, but moving on to some of the units that will be a little bit more useful. The Hawatcha, the Black Powder Hawatcha, which can bring down walls very very easily. It is wildly inaccurate however. Uh, but some of the shots may well land in the Arthur Dane and Dol Amroth infantry. So this is a bit of a, bit of a gamble but we'll see if it pays off. It's the only siege equipment that uh, can can bring to be fair, so they didn't really have much of a choice in that sense of things. Some nomadic raiders, of course, some chief archers on the front line, unsurprising to see them. And we have some Nurad halberds, so again, halberdiers are going to be very useful, provided they can stay away from the pikes, and there are quite a lot of them. Nomadic marauders, so again, some axe throwers, which are going to be very, very nice. And back here we have some Brotherhood of the Sword. They're not multiple HP, I don't think, but they are very, very high on melee skill. Uh, speaking of something something that is multiple HP, however, we have the Nurad Warchief's Retainer, so they are, I think, the only multiple HP Halberd in the game. Now that the um, Witch Realm Enslavers from Rudal have been made multiple HP two-handed axe units. Speaking of two-handed axe units, we have some Brotherhood of the Axe. Uh, this guy has forgot his axe, interestingly enough. Some of them are missing their uh, weapon models at the moment, uh, which is interesting. But the Brotherhood of the Axe, uh, obviously, not multiple HP again, but still very, very strong in their own right. Siege Tower up here with more nomadic light infantry, a lot of lower tier units. Kand have definitely brought a lot in terms of numbers, which is good to see to offset Umbar's more quality focused approach on the other side. So nomadic warriors, more nomadic raiders, and then some more Nirad halberds. So I will make a cut while the attackers move into position to assault the keep, and we will rejoin the battle then. So naturally being sent like lambs to the slaughter, the nomadic raiders are going to be the first ones up just to try and absorb some of the ammunition of the Dole Amroth archers up on the walls, which it seems like they're having mixed success in. Some of the Dole Amroth archers seem to just be holding their ammunition in reserve, which is a good idea. These archers aren't really going to do much damage from behind these walls over here. They might try and shoot over the walls into some of these pikes, but the nomadic raiders are so inaccurate uh, that it's likely not going to be the biggest threat. And also these towers will probably take care of the nomadic raiders slowly but surely. Uh, but the Kandish infantry is moving forward first. I'm actually surprised to see that Umbar aren't pushing up on the other side at the same time. Uh, that could be a bit of a problem as things go along. Uh, but Khan are going to move up a ladder and a siege tower onto this wall over here, I would imagine. The ram is also going to go for the gate, so a good combined assault here from Khan is going to take shape. And actually down here, it's going to be interesting to see how the infantry manages from Arthur Dane and Dole Amos, because a lot of them are pikes and spears. They don't really have anything that can really get down and dirty up on the walls up here. Uh, which may well count against them in the long run. They've got a single unit of dismounted Fornos to rain knights, but that's not going to be enough, I don't think. I would have liked to see some potentially more basic infantry that could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe very efficiently uh, with the lower tier units from Khan. Arthur Dane men-at-arms will do very nicely against nomadic infantry, especially in the kind of numbers that you could bring them in this sort of situation. Uh, the Dunedain peacekeepers should do decently enough, but again, they are spears, and that infantry malice may well count against them as things go on. Uh, the tower is slowly but surely inflicting some casualties on the Kandish infantry as it approaches. The ladders are now in place. The walls are no match for the valor and force of our arms. You can see that the nomadic raiders are firing, but several of them are hitting this building, which is no longer see-through like it used to be in the old Kerandros. 
uh, but they haven't really got anything in the way of casualties inflicted down here. There was one dead archer here up on the walls. Uh, but Khand are now here, and they will be able to mount an assault. Albeit this nomadic light infantry is not really going to make the biggest dent in units like Dunedain Peacekeepers. But they do have a presence up on the wall now, which is the first stage in every siege assault. Umbar, however, has got a little bit more quality, so maybe Umbar is just sort of holding back their archers for the end so they can try and skirmish down the very elite units that Dolan and Rothenar have been stationed up on that hill. Uh, but immediately the Nomadic Light Infantry is retreating. That's a little bit disappointing to see. I mean, it's probably a smart move, all things considered. Uh, but it would be nice to see, because eventually they're going to have to commit somewhere. Umbar is now moving forward. The Balagai Archers sort of single filing in front of the Karan Dross fortifications. The Band of Brass Archers and the Dora Nernal Archers still opening fire. Now the Balagai Archers, again, they're likely to take a bit of damage from the towers that the Keep of Karan Dross has around the outside of it. Uh, but the Archers themselves are sending some arrows, although they are arcing their shots quite a lot. And the Balagai Archers will stand up to regular arrows easily enough. These Dunedain Peacekeepers were actually thinking of going down there. I suppose that's what the Candish player was uh, was trying to do. Trying to bait the Dunedain Peacekeepers into coming down the ladders, but you, you'd have to be pretty dumb to try and do that. And fortunately, the Arthurdain player has got his head screwed on, so he's not going to take the bait. Uh, they're not able to sort of cover all of this wall, I would imagine, especially when Umbar get into, uh, get into range and start putting up their own ladders on the other side. Yeah, this gate is about to be destroyed. One more hit will do it. And then Khan will have another way in. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Now you have to be careful here, because this is actually a place where the uh, defenders could counter-attack. And a lot of Khan units have got on the front. They do have their Brotherhood of the Sword, but a lot of their basic units, like the Nomadic Light Infantry, are going to be no match, even for just basic pikes like the Dora and Ernil. Still trying to skirmish down on bar with their Balagai archers, but again, not really able to get the best angle on these pikes. They might get one or two casualties inflicted, but ultimately not really paying any dividends as it stands. Abrazanim Naduzagar moving up to the wall. And we shall see what they could, they are capable of. As soon as they get onto the wall, they should do a decent amount of damage. Uh, but the Dunedain Rangers rightly targeting the Abrazanim as they move into range without their shields. The body pier well, without any shields, the body piercing should do a healthy amount of damage to the Abrazanim. And indeed several of them are falling, and this is a pretty decent unit to be losing this early. Now Khand is moving up onto the walls and they are leading the way with their Brotherhood of the Sword. And with their skill and their infantry killing prowess, they should make a significant dent in the Dunedain Peacekeepers. Walls are no match for the valor and force of our arms. But the tower here is going to inflict casualties back onto the Brotherhood of the Sword, and this may well mean that they get defeated. Khan are going to need to get some reinforcements up there quickly, and they are going to, these nomadic warriors. Mm -hmm. the, the nomadic marauders being sent forward, and they are point blank firing into these Doran Ernil pikes. Yeah, a bit of a misplay this from, from Dole Amroth, just sort of trying to tank these axes on the chin, it's not going to work out. Especially seeing as the Nomadic Marauders are relatively cheap as far as axe throwers go. Now, some archers are starting to target the Nomadic Marauders, but it's not the greatest amount of surface area they've got to work with. And all the while, the Dole Amroth Pike's taking some pretty substantial losses. Umbar now getting up onto the walls themselves with their own spears, but once again on this side the Dunedain Peacekeepers should be able to repel at least one unit of the Balagaya footmen. Again, they won't be able to hold out forever. It'll be interesting to see how this works. Definitely a very cagey start, and based on how many frames there are, uh, the attackers are not likely to overcommit. But we'll see. Here we can see the Brotherhood of the Sword. They've taken some substantial losses, but so too have the Dunedain Peacekeepers. And now with the addition of the Nomadic Warriors also attacking them from behind, Khand are going to take this wall, which will then allow them to get their chief archers up onto the wall and get them firing into the enemy ranks. Uh, but yeah, these Nomadic Marauders have done some pretty substantial damage to the Dol Amroth pikemen already, trying to deal equal damage to both units to try and make the job of getting through the gate as easy as possible. Although Khand don't really have the ability to push through based on the fact that they don't have their Nurad footmen. 
so they will have to still just duke it out with the Dole Amber Pikeman, and I'm not sure how well they'll do at that. Meanwhile, spear to spear, we can see up here the Belagai Footman going up against the Dunedain Peacekeepers. This is a battle certainly in favour of the Dunedain Peacekeepers 1-1. One one. Umbar. We can see that the Abrazani have made it to the walls, and they are going to get into melee with the Dunedain Rangers. Uh, but there aren't really enough of them, and especially with the dismounted Fornos to Rain Knight, an equivalent unit when both of them are at full strength, but the Abrazani taking some grievous losses on the approach. And that's ultimately going to count against them here, as the Rangers do manage to get out of melee. And they will be a very important tool moving into the later game. As the Abrazani try to take a toll on these dismounted Fornos to Rain Knights, they won't really be able to inflict too much in the way of casualties. And then as we look back over here, we can see the Arthur Dane Pikeman still formed up in a flat formation though, and they are taking a bit of arrow fire, but again, it's over the walls, so the arcing shots aren't really going to have the greatest effect. Uh, but over here, you can see the Dunedain Peacekeepers being whittled down to size. As Brotherhood of the Sword have taken losses though, some very substantial ones. They're not really a unit which will be too much of a concern for the rear defence anymore, but they do still have their Brotherhood of the Axe and the War Chief's retainers being held back. Fire arrows going into the side of this formation. A mixture of the Band of Brass and the Doran Ernil. This is a decent clump of troops that the defenders can start to shoot into. Not their most important units, but still, casualties of any sort at this point would be welcome. And the Balagai footmen are shaken. The Dunedain, of course, very good morale on units like this. Umbar have got some locked morale units in their higher tiers, but the Belagai are just basic units, so they will not have the luxury of sticking in this fight until death. And I would imagine as soon as they dip below 15 men that they will probably waver and break off. Meanwhile, sword to sword here, the Abrazani. Unfortunately, they were doomed from the start in this encounter thanks to the damage they took from the Rangers. Taking out a banner carrier. Uh, but ultimately they are out, outnumbered and outmatched in this fight. So Arthur Dane is going to keep Umbar off of this part of the wall. And Umbar are being forced to send some halberds up here. This is a very strange arrangement of ladders. I don't know what's going on there. But the halberds are going to get up onto the wall. Their AP uh, might help them against the four lost terrain knights here. But it's not really the ideal place for halberds. The defending archers are going to have fantastic shots into them. We'll see how well they can manage. Uh, but the defenders, unfortunately, are quite content to start wasting their ammo early by shooting over the wall, arcing their shots into a unit which is basically tailor-made for absorbing archer fire in the shape of those Balagaya archers. Over here we've got Khand once again, using his allies' ladder this time. Or is he? He might have just gone through the building, actually, which is far more likely. Uh, but Khand coming to the aid of his ally, the nomadic warriors coming in. Uh, but the Nomadic Warriors, without the support of the Brotherhood of the Sword, are much less scary. And the Dunedain Peacekeepers holding firm with the support of those archers down there, the Band of Brass archers, shooting their fire ammunition to the side of the Candish Infantry. And again, breaking the Candish Infantry is definitely a worthwhile tactic. They don't have the highest level of morale. Uh, these Nomadic Raiders, again, these poor Dole Amroth pikemen are just having to sort of stay in formation and get shot point blank. Uh, interestingly enough, though, the towers here are still under the control of the defenders, which means slowly but surely these arrows are going to sort of one by one kill off the Candish infantry as it moves forward. And they are in range of it. Let's see how the Halberdiers get on against the dismounted Fornos to Rain Knights over here. Because we are actually past the halfway point in terms of frames in this battle. Uh, but of course in terms of actual action we've barely begun. And again these Balagai Halberds don't yeah, with those body piercing projectiles, they're just going to get slaughtered as soon as they get up onto the walls. Uh, they really need the defenders to run out of ammunition here, because so far the defenders, they're in a pretty decent position. And unfortunately it does look as though Beery is going to send forward another unit of Balagai Halberds, which is essentially just sending them into a meat grinder, because the dismounted Fornos terrain knights are going to be able to hold them in melee, and the rangers are going to be able to do the vast majority of the damage, the lion's share. And it's a similar story over here with the Bandabras. They're not body piercing, so they're not getting the job done quite so quickly. Uh, but the, having a look over here, the Dunedain Peacekeepers are running a little low on man count. So really another unit sent up onto the walls might be enough to break the Sauer defence. 
It's a shame the Halberds went sent over here, really, I suppose, just to overwhelm that part of the defence. Again, these nomadic marauders just throwing their axes into the front line of this Dol Amroth pike block. If it was me, I, I would honestly be quite tempted to move out of the walls with my uh, with my Dol Amroth pikes. I mean, you, you run the risk of being surrounded, but based on the lower quality troops that Kand has on display over here, it might be worth your time to just sort of abandon the hill defence up here and try and counter-attack. This is a bit of a worrying sight for the defenders as well, Kand being able to get their missile troops up onto the walls. They'll be able to turn around and start using their own ammunition. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I think these Dora Nernil archers are actually out of ammunition. Indeed they are, and they are going to counter-attack through the, through the gates. And the Nomadic Marauders are going to try and run. And indeed, they do have some success. I mean, honestly, the Nomadic Light Infantry is bad enough that, again, counter-attacking with the pikes with the support of these... Archers just to add some numbers might well be the answer here to start causing some real trouble to this lower tier Karnish force. The Narad Halberds are in the background, but they're a little bit far removed from their their main force. Slowly but surely, these Dunedain peacekeepers are being dragged down, uh, which is worrying because then Umbar will have a way into the uh, into the settlement again. This is so far this is a cautionary tale about just leaving your pikes to be shot. You should either make sure that they take cover behind the walls or counter-attack with them. Because that will force your opponent's archers back. And honestly, Umbar don't really have anything in the way of support troops here. They do have some more Balagaya archers. But honestly, Umbar's initial forces have not really had the most success. Especially over here where their, their initial lines that went in were utterly destroyed mainly by the Dunedain Rangers. And the dismounted knights holding fast. Still the towers, in firm control. These Dora and Ernil archers have been repositioned to try and deal with these nomadic raiders up on the wall, which is understandable. Try and stop the Kandish archers from getting any sort of cost-effective work done. And that's good to see. And in melee, I would definitely back the Dora and Ernil archers. They certainly have a higher armor value. And no archers like this are going to have particularly high melee skills, so it might just come down to that in the end. There are halberds moving forward. The nomadic marauders coming back forwards again. Must be infuriating for the defenders to keep seeing the attacking skirmishers move in and out of cover. But it is part of the game, and if you just stand there and take it, then the attackers are going to continue to try and employ that tactic. Those nomadic warriors, only seven of them, and they're wavering. And these Belagai footmen not looking too healthy. Honestly, the attacking army in general is not looking too numerous. Umbar definitely went heavier on their skirmishers, and in order to use them properly going to need to sort of get into the settlement to try and shoot up onto the hill. Now this is what I was hoping for all along really, in the Four Noster Rain Knights charging out to try and deal with these Balagaya archers and they are multiple HP and they're well armoured and shielded so they will be able to get there. Not a fantastic connection it must be said. The cavalry getting caught on their own units or maybe a bit of indecision here from the Arthur Dane player. He needs to get his cavalry out of the settlement and charging around because it's going to be no use to anyone camping on the town centre, uh, but it looks like he is going to retreat and that's a real shame. And that might honestly be where the defenders lose this fight, because that cavalry running around out here with these disparate attacking units would have been exactly the sort of thing to solidify the defenders' advantage, but he's retreating with them and they're going to be wasted up there. They're, they're going to be able to do no good at all up on that hill. Meanwhile, can't Still gaining a bit of a foothold up on this wall over here. Those Brotherhood of the Sword, only 15 of them left. And now sensing a bit of weakness from these Dora and Ernil Pikes. They are going to send forward their Nurad Halberds. One of the stronger units that Khand has brought in this field. And the AP will stand in pretty good stead, especially now that the Pike formation has essentially been broken. They are still getting a surround off here. Uh, but ultimately Khan are going to have the numbers to just force the Dol Amroth troops aside. Band of Brass Archers getting sent into melee against the Khandish Marauders. Which honestly just preventing the axes from being thrown is, is worth it. What's going on over here? Dunedain Rangers. I think they're out of ammunition. They pulled out their swords, certainly. Khan's forces slowly but surely trickling forward. But now another unit of pikes is being sent in. I mean, the defenders is honestly there for the taking for the defenders. I'm so disappointed that they didn't send out those lancers to start running around out here. That would have been so troublesome. 
for Umbar and Khan because all of their lower tier archers and lower tier infantry troops would have been having a nightmare trying to deal with that. And if you rob the attackers of their numbers, nine times out of ten, you will rob them of their victory as well. Due to nine rangers being sent in, the other unit of reserve pikes also being committed forward to this blob. Uh, but ultimately, Khan should have the ability to outlast them. The Nomadic Marauders also taking some ranged fire from the Dora and Anil archers in the background. The Brotherhood of the Sword are being recommitted along with some Abrazani Nadibar we've up on the wall over here. Umbar helping out his ally. The Vanderbrass archers actually forcing the Khandish Marauders back with the help of the uh, archer support they're getting from the Dora and Anil archers. Uh, but that's going to change as soon as the Brotherhood of the Sword and the Abrazani arrive on the station. The Vanderbrass archers are going to be no match for those Brotherhood of the, Brotherhood of the Sword. The Manic Marauders still menacingly stood there. In fact, those Nurad Halberds have been forced back very effectively. The use of those reserve pikes, very good. The support of the rangers as well. And ultimately the number of pikes was replenished and the single unit of Halberds was not enough. So this Candish force has actually been repelled. And they're going to have to fall back on using their axes once more to try and whittle down that Candish, the Candish, Dolanroth pike block. They will do it eventually, but the defenders, their outer defences has done reasonably well thus far. Alagaya archers getting up onto the walls. They have pulled out their short swords, however, so I would imagine they're out of ammunition. And these Arthur Dane plankmen still just staying in position. Now they're getting shot in the back by the nomadic raiders up on the other wall. Dismounted Fornos to Rain Knight still blocking this route into the settlement. There are some Numenorean Shield Guard and the, or two units actually, of Numenorean Shield Guard that are menacing with intent. Meanwhile, the battle is very much in our favor. Victory will be ours. Those Balagai archers trying to attack down from the walls, and the Arthurdane Pikes are immediately going to be reinforced by the Dora and Ernil archers. Uh, but considering the archer support, I don't know. I mean, the Nomadic Raiders aren't the best archers, I suppose, but even so, it should still be in favour of the attackers here. And now with the Abrazani in particular, uh, things should start to go very much in. Although those Abrazani have got their swords and shields out. They used up all their ammo already. It must have been very ineffectual if they did. But they double as pretty decent infantry units as well, so it's not the end of the world. Another unit of Abrazani in there. And now we can see that the pikes have been whittled down. And Khan are going to have another push with their halberds at the front. I'm surprised Old Amroth are actually counter-attacking outwards now. Uh, but the Khandish Halberds, with, the numbers should be sufficient to win this fight for Khan. Especially now that the Dole Amroth troops are shaken. Morale might prove to be Dole Amroth's worst enemy here. Uh, but slowly but surely the outer defences are being whittled down. The Brotherhood of the Sword slowly but surely hacking their way through the Band of Brass Archers who are wavering. They managed to kill a couple more unit models though. These dismounted Fawn Osterain Knight should probably be retreated, honestly. Those are troops that would be very well used in the final stand. And these Balagai archers wavering, so again, another ineffectual push from the attackers. Hmm. And still the defensive towers fire. The amount of kills that they can get might well prove to be pretty key as well. If we have a look at the percentage of kills... The attackers have lost more, but as we've seen in sieges in the past, it tends to be the attackers that run away with it towards the end. Umbar is sending up some Luminorian shield guard up onto this wall to solidify their advantage, and the Bandabrass archers do rout, seeing more elite troops being committed forwards against them. And the pikemen did retreat, and the defenders are going to fully retreat, I would imagine. These dismounted knights need to get out of there, otherwise they're going to find their escape cut off. Those Belagai archers slowly but surely are being destroyed see how they can do now, and indeed the dismounted fawn off the rain knights, it looks like they are going to try and escape the proceedings and get back to the final stand up on the hill. The mounted variant of these guys had such an opportunity to rout this side of Umbar's attack almost entirely, and they didn't take it, which is a real shame. You can see the swords through the walls. And indeed they are going to get away, I think. Provided they can escape the arrow fire to a decent extent. I mean, those Arthurian pikemen are pretty much finished. These Dora and Ernil archers, archers are actually setting up outside, so they still had some ammunition. Firing a couple of volleys into the Numenorean shield guard, but heavily armoured and shielded, the Numenorean shield guard are going to be able to stand up to that all day long. And now the Dora and Ernil archers, that might have been 
a mistake which is going to cost them their lives, to be honest with you. Now that the Numenorean Shield Guard are on their way and the Dora and Ernal Archers are content to walk, but again, the Numenorean Shield Guard backing off. Some very, very strange plays going on here. They're going to try and retreat, but they're not going to have any success at doing so. The Numenorean Shield Guard are going to poke most of these guys to death. Oof, the dismounted Fallen Osterrain Knights are being targeted by archers. Serpentine. Yeah, but really, the, the only event going on in melee is over here. Dora and Ernil archers just being butchered by the Numenorean Shield Guard. And again, that, an archer that still had even a small amount of ammunition could have been very important moving into the final stand. And instead, they went for a more risky maneuver. Now, they will get away, of course. Even if they break, they will just go back to the town centre. But even so, every man will count in this final stand. These Dora and Ernil archers are perpetually routing in place. The Swornos terrain knights have been really cut down to size. It'll be interesting to see how the defenders deal with this. They've got a few genuine damage dealers. The Black Swan Vanguard are going to be very important for dealing with the heavy, more heavily armoured elites of the enemy. The Dunedain Troll Slayers as well in a similar vein. The Haven Guard. That cavalry is going to be very difficult to use in this kind of situation unless the attackers really make some pretty key mistakes. Firing some arrows into those Neurad Halberds might be worth a couple of kills. One kill, two kill, three kills. And now the attackers will begin the process of trying to occupy this lower ground. And I'm not sure how much in terms of archers the defenders have left. They've got this Tirithea Marksman unit over here. Uh, which is more based around its defence than its attack. Which might actually end up being a good thing considering the skirmish heavy approach that Umbar has decided to go with. But I worry for the fate of these Arthur Dane Pikemen. The shielded units are going to be very key. These are Numinas and Gate Guards. We'll see. Have resigning Nadubar. This is another potential uh, banana peel for the defenders. The Black Powder Hawacha is going to be moving into position. And we'll see how well that does. These Abrazani look like they're out of ammunition. Considering they've got their shields out. More and more men pouring into this lower section of the settlement, including Numenorean Shield Guard moving forward in Shield War. These nomadic raiders getting forward, trying to kill what they can. Loose formation is being employed where able. Oh, this is another unit for Umbar, which could well prove to be very key moving into the late game. The Castamere's Rangers. That body piercing is just the sort of thing to destroy a tightly packed defense. Ooh, the Black Powder Hawacha is firing. And you can see how inaccurate it is, but it's also going to get a fair amount of kills because of the amount of surface area the defenders are occupying on that nice target that the Black Powder Hawatcher has. Look at that. Doing a lot of damage there to the Tirithea Marksman. Getting a few hits on the Dunedain Troll Slayers as well. It doesn't have a lot of ammunition, the Black Powder Hawatcher, but it's done a decent amount of damage there. It's exactly the sort of thing which might well turn out to be pretty important. I think it's only got a couple of volleys left though. Very limited ammunition in a unit like this. And I would imagine the attackers are going to try and skirmish as much as they possibly can, mainly because of the composition of the defending forces. Man, those Tirithea marksmen certainly took a beating. There's a lot of crispy Dol Amroth archers there on the floor. And the Castamere's rangers might be just the sort of thing to make this advantage stick. And I think the Black Powder Hawatcher is going to try and reposition to attack this area over here. Which again is going to be very good. I think Khand have done a very good job so far in this fight of spreading the damage throughout the opposite opposing defensive positions to even the damage, which is going to make it very difficult for the defenders to build up an advantage on any front. The Abrazani were moving forward with their bows out. So again, the skirmishers are going to try and do their work. Nomadic Light Infantry still pouring into the settlement. And of course, Khand still have their Brotherhood of the Axe and their Nurad War Chiefs retainers. Without the pikemen, the Murad Warchief's retainers will be a very difficult unit for the defenders to bring down. The Dunedain Troll Slayers would be a safe bet, but other than that, in a straight up melee, you wouldn't want to send something like your Black Swans in against them. The Manic Marauders trying to get into position. Here comes another volley from the Black Powder Hawatcher. I hope I'm saying that right. Here it comes. Getting a few hits, but again, you can see how inaccurate it is. And each hit is worth 
one, two, or three kills each at most. Getting some nice hits on the Tirithea of Wardens, killing some more pikes, both Arthur Dane and Old Amroth. Not the most effective volley. Several of the shots missing. But even so, every kill will count, and this must be heartbreaking for the defenders to watch. A lot of friendly fire there, though. The Narun Aru Royal Guard strafing across the artillery as it fired. And there's a lot of multiple HP spears that the attackers have essentially lost. Umbar not really paying attention to what his ally was doing with his artillery. Some more casualties being inflicted, though. More skirmish going on. There's not really anything the defenders can do about this. This was the focus in particular of Umbar's army. Castamir's rangers utilising some of their body piercing ammunition, although they are firing right up into the air, so not the most devastating volleys, although I think they're going for the Illuminar skate guards, which again is a prime target because of how good they are in terms of pikes. And yeah, you can see the majority of the attacking forces are actually going for the Illuminar skate guards, one of the better targets that they could go for. I think if we have a look over here, you can see the Doondine Troll Slayers hidden in the back, trying to avoid most of this, and again, getting a defender's perspective of the reigning death that the Hawacha has. The enemy force remains. And in tightly clumped formations like this, the Hawacha can be very, very effective. Again, it is a bit of a gimmick unit most of the time, the Hawacha. I've noticed that in uh, killing infantry, it's not really been all that effective in the past, but now... It's definitely found its niche in a situation like this where the defenders are all bottled up. And in a situation where its lack of accuracy doesn't really matter because if it misses one target, it will probably hit another. And this front line of pikes and Tirithea wards has taken a real beating. Well, here at the front, you can see the Numenorean shield guard being sent in to destroy these pockets of resistance from the Dora and Ernil archers. They will finish what they started outside of the walls. We're well within the final 10,000 frames at this point. The attackers are almost certainly going to turn this around, I would imagine. I mean, if it comes down to a sheer melee fight, the defenders might yet outlast the, uh, the attackers. And they still have some archers and they still have some decent infantry in position, but ultimately this unit of cavalry is likely going to be a total waste. Now you can see that there is going to be attacks. Khan are committing forward some nomadic marauders and some Nurad halberds, as well as some of their lower tier infantry as well. So the attack is going to begin in earnest with the support of those Umbarim archers. More and more men pouring into the settlement. More nomadic light infantry. And the poor pikemen in this battle have really had a hard time of it with regards to trying to deal with skirmish fire. Nurad Halberd's going to be sending in, sent in as the first wave, and their AP will help them a lot against the Tirithea Wardens. The Pikes are a little bit too far behind the Tirithea Wardens to actually help them all that much. The Illumina Skate Guards are moving into position. Those Tirithea Marksmen are doing their best to try and thin the herd. Interesting. The Illumina Skate Guards plugging a gap in the line, which the Nomadic Light Infantry were going for initially. Let's have a look at this front line. Obviously, fighting uphill, this isn't going to be the easiest task for the Kandish forces. But I think, in terms of attrition, the damage has already been done. And it's a very good position that these Tirithea marks were taken up on this hill. A very popular position for defenders to use in terms of skirmishes on Care Andros. However, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. The low morale Kandish troops, however, are not having the easiest time of it. They are getting reinforced, which is stabilizing their morale as it stands. The Luminous Gate Guards still take, having pot shots taken at them from the Umbar Archers. Those Dunedain Troll Slayers are throwing their payload at something. I think it's the Numenorean Shield Guard. Not the worst target in the world, but I definitely would save the Dunedain Troll Slayers for a multiple HP target. Uh, which the Numenorean Shield Guard are not. There's the Narun Aru Royal Guard firing in the distance. They are dealing heavy damage to those Numenorean Shield Guard though. Which might be just the sort of respite they need, because then of course they can pull out their axes, use them in melee, and really help shore up this defensive line. Having a look here, the attackers are ahead, but they are losing some substantial numbers now that it's come down to a pure melee fight. With the very efficient Arthurdane Phalanx, but still more Archer Fire is coming into this defensive position. More and more numbers being committed forward. Abrazanim, Numenorians, Castamere's Rangers, 
But a lot of this low tier Carnage infantry is not really going to do the business here in melee against the more elite Dole Amroth forces, which make up the bulk of this part of the line. And in particular, over here, we've got the Black Swans. Now, their AP isn't really going to be most efficiently used against the low tier Carnage troop, but they'll, they'll still easily beat them. Meanwhile, the Numenorean Shield Guard coming in here to a pretty thin part of the line. It's really only the Anuminos Gate Guards that are over here. Uh, but they are being reinforced, or supported I should say, by the Tirithea marksmen up on that hill. The Manic Light Infantry is shaken. The Numenorians, on the other hand, have a lot of morale, I'm fairly sure. More and more low-tier Kandish troops are just sort of swarming all over the place. And there's some Abrazanim as well. And now the Dunedain Troll Slayers, out of ammunition, they are pulling out their two-handed axes. Going to get into melee with that AP. And supporting the Anuminas Gate Guard, that's a very potent combination. And that should halt the advance of the Numenorians and the Rangers in their tracks. And of course, there's still the Haven Guard and the Knights. Well, they are multiple HP Lancers. But, I mean, honestly, at this point, it might be worth their time to try and pick a more vulnerable part of the line and charge their cavalry through. But I guess they're going to try and wait and see if maybe if their own line breaks, they'll then charge it. We'll see. These marksmen trying to do as much damage as they can. The Nomadic Rangers and the Naran Aru Guard are returning fire into them. But honestly, I think Dol Amroth and Arthur Day would probably prefer this unit get targeted rather than their front line. Because at the moment, their front line is winning the sheer melee encounter. The Nurad Halberds and their AP, not enough. Now this is a risky manoeuvre, but nonetheless might be quite necessary. The Hawacha is firing. Shots into the back of their own men might cause them to break, but they are actually primarily hitting the defensive units. Probably going to try and go after the Haven Guard, because now the Haven Guard is being forced into melee, which might not be the best thing for the attackers, honestly, now that they are on scene. You have to remember, the attackers still have some elite units in reserve. They have those Naran Iron Lord Guard, which are going to be good in melee. Brotherhood of the Axe and the Nurad Warchief Retainers also going to be strong unless they've already been committed and indeed the Nurad Warchief Retainers are here now and the Brotherhood of the Axe are on the other side uh, but going uphill the Warchief Retainers will still struggle especially in the presence of the Illuminas Gate Guards which despite being under withering arrow fire for a lot of the time they're still in relatively good shape so the high armor value is really helping them there the Haven Guard are in the middle and they are going to be carving their way through the Nomadic Light Infantry while the Brotherhood of the Axe reinforcing this flank, trying to take on the Tirithea Marksmen and some of these Black Swans. They should do a decent job against the Dole Admiral Infantry. Honestly, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think the defenders have got all that much... The defenders, the attackers have got all that much left. I mean, it really is going to come down to just a straight fight at this point. That cavalry is not going to be all that effective if the line breaks, because they will just be overwhelmed. I don't know. I mean, over on this flank, I think the defenders are going to win quite handily with the Black Swans and Haven Guard working in tandem. And then they could wrap up the line, and that could spell disaster for the attackers. In mean, the Nurad Warchief's retainers, defeat seems certain, but they're going to fight hard. AP, multiple HP, very strong. We've seen how strong they can be in the past. Still, the Nomadic Raiders trying to shoot in, trying to do what damage they can, but the Brotherhood of the Axe, ultimately not going to be able to deal with all of this Dol Amroth infantry. And obviously there's a bit of a break here that Four Nostarain Knights might be able to punch right through the middle. And if they do, that could be disastrous for the Black Powder Hawacha, which is now firing in and this is a big target. The Hawacha might well be the kingmaker here. And indeed the Knights, I don't think they're going to be able to force their way through because these Abrazanim are going to try and block the way as best they can. But the attacker's centre has somewhat folded. The Abrazanim is sort of going to have to make up the front line. Although the Narun Aruror Guard will be sent in as well to try and plug the gap, I would imagine. And their anti-cavalry bonus is going to be pretty substantial. The Brotherhood of the Axe trying their best. It's dead even now. We've seen how clutch the Haven Guard can be in the past. And it might well turn out that they have to do that sort of engage in those sorts of heroics once more. The Hawacha, I think, is has expended all of its ammo. And I think they've just sent the crew in. Well, these knights are going to try and get around this flank over here, uh, which is going to prove to be quite necessary, because ultimately the Anubinus Gate Guards, they've lost their numbers. 
and the Nurad Warchief's retainers are slowly but surely breaking the, the defensive line over here. Now, this is not where I would have sent the knights, because the Warchief retainers are going to make mincemeat of knights on horseback in a sustained fight like that. Or multiple HP lancers, I should say. And I think the defenders are just going to have... The numbers discrepancy is going to be just a bit too much for them to bear. I think they're just going to have a little bit too much in the way of HP to try and cut their way through. Oops. The Naruna Aru and the War Chiefs retainers are going to be a bridge too far, I think. Those nomadic raiders are out of ammunition. They're going to be sent forward. The Haven Guard are retreating as well, which... I think they're just going to try and go after the Narad War Chief retainers, actually, which is understandable, considering they've got things mostly under control here in the middle. Although, the Brotherhood of the Axe have turned things around over here. They've managed to hack their way through the Tirithea marks, and the Black Swans are still trying to fight in the middle, but there's only seven of them remaining. A charge over here from the Cavalry is going to be necessary, a full speed charge, which we haven't really seen from the multiple HP Lancers as it stands. They've been mostly just sort of clumsily bumping into the attackers as they move forward. The Naru Naru are just being kept in reserve, I think, because they're worried about the prospect of the cavalry cracking their way through the lines, and then they can just easily shut them down with the Royal Guardsmen. These knight, these lancers, though, I, should, I keep calling them knights, but that's somewhat misleading. But yeah, they're staying in melee for too long. And they're going to be pulled off their cavalry, or pulled off their horses and butchered by the Axeman. These Haven Guard defeats seem certain. The Narad War Chiefs retainers have managed to get their halberds down and they're keeping the Haven Guard at arm's length. And at this point, the Naru Naru Royal Guard are going to be sent forward. Very close though, this. It's going to be well within the 10% mark. Uh, but I think the defenders are on the verge of being pulled apart here. Our army is tiring. And it's such a shame, because if that cavalry had just committed itself to going outside the walls and charging down some of those numbers, the attackers wouldn't have had the fodder to pull this off. Because it is ultimately the units of quality which have won this for the attackers, I think. The Narad War Chief Retainers and now the Naru Naru Royal Guard are coming into melee with their huge melee defense in this version of the game. Uh, but these, you know, the four Noster Ring Knights were horribly mismanaged, I think. The way he used them, it would have been much better to bring the Knights of the Numinus, but even then, it would have been a misuse of them. Evenly matched. Still, the Haven Guard refused to give up. There's only one Fawn Osterain Knight left alive. The Brotherhood of the Axe have proven to be quite a clutch unit on this side. Uh, but the Black Powder Hawatcher has proven to be quite a force in this fight. We'll see how many kills it got, but it is. It's hit the enemy where it's hurt. The Arthur Dane General going down. Dol Amroth and Arthur Dane are factions with relatively high morale anyway, so if they do rout, it will be because of severe army losses. See, these wardens are still fighting. Don't think there's any black swans left alive. And now the Brotherhood of the Axe are going to wrap up the line. And it is primarily Kandish troops left. It's really only the Naruna Arun Royal Guard left from uh, Umbar. There goes the Kandish general, though. But most of the Kandish troops that are left are the quality Kandish troops, so you can't really rely on a chain route if you are the defenders. Those Haven Guard, though, they are giving as good as they get in melee. They aren't really able to lay down the most amount of damage against the unit like Nurad War Chief Retainers, though. Because of the polearm nature of them. See, there go the routing units. Even the Anuminas Gate Guards are starting to route, so Arthur Day. Largely gone, just old Amroth left alive really, and now the Abrazani Nadubar will be going to complete a surround on the Haven Guard. And that's going to be all she wrote really. You can see the Brotherhood of the Axe and what's left of the Nomadic Light Infantry and Raiders finishing off the these two Tirithea Wardens who are wavering themselves. Uh, but for the rest of this battle we will be bearing witness to once again another brave but ultimately fruitless final stand from the Haven Guard. They've been in this situation before and they... They are a very strong unit, but they are not strong enough to defeat an enemy of this quality all on their lonesome. And there are a few things the defenders could have done to mitigate that, primarily the use of the Arthur Dane Cavalry, which could have been a fantastic pick, and in the end it turned out being a bit of a waste. Those nomadic raiders. Looks like they're going to try and finish off the units that are just perpetually routing in the town centre. Let's go up to times two speed. 
Where's Emre Hill? There he is. He's not even bloodied up. Trying to pad his kill count over there, the Carnish player, by killing the units that won't fight back. Interestingly enough, if you do actually attack those perpetually routing units in the town centre, they do come back from routing. It's a way of sort of bumping them out of their glitch. Imra Hill being knocked over several times there by a couple of the Halberdiers. And it is only a matter of time. Still over a thousand frames though. So the Haven Guard not going quietly into that good night. It's still a very close fight. I think a few mistakes made on both sides. None of them really as egregious as the misuse of the cavalry. Uh, but other than that, close. The defenders could have won this one. And it's much more of an old school uh, Care Andros siege, this one. Uh, based on the fact that it was only a 2v2 and only really the keep at the back was used, as opposed to a larger scale battle in which uh, the city itself gets used as well. In which case, all of the 42,000 frames would have been battle, as opposed to a little over half of it in this case. Care Andros is certainly the sort of map that can uh, lead to 60,000 plus frame battles. And this is going to be the end. Imra Hill might well be the last man standing here. And indeed he is. He will be the final one to fight against the nomads of the east. And there he goes. That was a very violent fall. And there we go. The attack is victorious, but only just. Only by a sword's edge indeed. Uh, Umbar getting a very low amount of kills, interestingly enough. But... Uh, that's probably be to be expected considering the kind of army he brought, which was primarily archer focused. And Arthurdain and Dol Amroth are two pretty well armoured factions. Uh, they made good use of their fortifications as well, so archers are not going to be the most efficient if you base your army around them. A lot of that, I'm willing to bet, was going to come from the rangers and the targeting of the Arthurdain pikes in the late game. Uh, the defender's doing decently between them, but I still think if Thick Dick over here had used his cavalry a little bit more bravely, this could easily have gone the other way. Having a look at Master Blaster's kill count, however, Nurad Wartis retain is doing very well. Brotherhood of the Axe coming in good in the late game. The Nomadic Marauders doing well early on to whittle down those pikes. But the Black Powder Hawatcher getting the highest amount of kills in his roster. Very, very good use of a unit which is quite unpredictable. And it's good to see the Hawatcher in action because I've never really captured it being used well. Uh, and the one time that I've used it, it was in a battle which kind of fell apart at the seams. Uh, so yeah. I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, the Hawatcha in action and doing well, and I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a return to Karandros, even if it wasn't really the whole city that we got to sort got got to see. Uh, so yeah, thank you to Master Blast for sending me this replay. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll join me for whatever is next.